All right. Are we ready, Jared? You are, Dan, yes. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Dan McCarran, the director at the Division of Marine Fisheries, and welcome to tonight's scoping meeting. Uh, it's to uh, give us some guidance on development of 2022 recreational fluke uh, and black sea bass measures. Uh, and I just want to open up by saying that, uh, you know, we're not crazy about this uh, virtual format, but we are really pleased that many of you are joining us. Uh, it is convenient, but it doesn't uh, quite match the, uh, the personal uh, connections that we make. And we hope that we'll be able to uh, do that uh, very soon, uh, hopefully by the spring. Um, this is a, uh, an interesting uh, meeting tonight because we are uh, working on what we seem to be doing every winter about this time, which is unique to these, this uh, suite of species of uh, black sea bass, fluke, and scup because they're co-managed with the Mid-Atlantic Fisheries Management Council and the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission. So we typically have to uh, tabulate all the catch from last year and very quickly uh, uh, analyze that data and come up with uh, rules for the following season. So this is really unique to this suite of species. And we don't do this for say striped bass uh, or, or, or you know, typically not for bluefish and some of those other species, but uh, we do appreciate uh, your patience as we do change these rules every year with an eye toward maintaining uh, sustainable levels of catch. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Nicola, why don't we go to the second slide? So uh, tonight we are looking to uh, develop uh, for 2022 uh, uh, proposed, not proposals, but we wanna get your feedback. We have some ideas in mind. And the purpose of tonight's uh, meeting is to explain the regulatory process to you, uh, but also get information from you uh, kind of in a fast track format so that we can make uh, decisions in April for final uh, action and time for the season to start. This doesn't allow us to go through a normal rulemaking process, which can take uh, many more months and give you many more opportunities. Uh, and we regret that that's the case. But so tonight we are looking for uh, information on management approaches to achieve a liberalization for fluke, but at the same time, a reduction uh, for black sea bass and also for scup as well. Uh, you can see on the slide, uh, we have uh, last year's rules for those three species, and then the action for 2022, for which uh, you are invited to give us your feedback tonight on which of the, uh, in the recipe for reductions and those are usually uh, seasons, uh, size limits, and bag limits, uh, which is the preferred option uh, for you personally. And we'll, we'll try to make sense of, of not only tonight's uh, you know, uh, verbal comments, but any written comments as well. So we want to, um, uh, if you go back to the previous slide, just quickly, we're going to look at a, a, a liberalization for fluke, a reduction in black sea bass, and a slight reduction in scup as well. So now the third slide, rules of engagement. Uh, again, it's a scoping meeting. Uh, we are doing preliminary analyses of the possible uh, measures. Uh, ultimately, the, the measures that we bring forward to the technical committee at ASMFC uh, has to uh, pass muster. Uh, we are trying to get the most up-to-date data as well and some of the data from last year is still coming in. Um, we are going to mute you during this presentation so you won't be able to unmute yourself uh, or have side conversations, uh, nor do we, um, do we run the chat function, uh, but we will take as much time as we need tonight uh, to get your comments and we do it in a kind of a linear fashion uh, where you can raise your hand, uh, DMF will put you into a queue and we'll recognize you and we will unmute you in the order that your hand went up. Uh, so tonight uh, we're going to go through these, these different proposals. Uh, you can see the different analyses, but you don't necessarily need to comment tonight. You could comment to us uh, uh, be, uh, between now and Monday. You can take your time maybe over the weekend um, 
If you could get it to us by Monday, February 21st, that would be great. Um, feel free to, uh, to follow up with us on that. Third slide, uh, fourth slide, please, the timeline. So I'm gonna let Nico and Meserve uh, cover this uh, timeline and, and much of the analysis uh, going forward. Uh, she worked closely with some of our data analysts, uh, such as uh, uh, Sam Truesdell, who's the technical uh, committee uh, representative for DMF on the ASMFC board. Uh, Nico is going to uh, walk through these proposals and also the, uh, the specifics uh, in the data. So, um, so thank you for that, for, for attending tonight, and uh, we look forward to your comments. So Nicola, why don't you uh, take it from there? Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. Hope you're all enjoying the, the spring weather. It has many of us uh, thinking about the spring. Today is warm weather. So I just wanted to cover first a little bit more detail of the timeline that Dan mentioned. Um, and why, why it is that it's, it's a bit of a, a scramble, you would say, to get these measures in place. Um, so back in August, it, that's when the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission and the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council established uh, the recreational harvest limit for this coming year for each of these species. And then we wait a couple more months until in December till we have more of the harvest data for 2021 to determine whether reductions or, or liberalizations are needed in order to uh, achieve yet not exceed those federally mandated recreational harvest limits. The last month or so has been spent with the um, ASMFC's technical committee um, developing, um, compiling the data and developing the methods that the states may now use to develop regulatory proposals. Um, an important step in that process um, happened when the, the technical committee did some additional analysis of the, the MRIP data and identified outliers, um, either high or low anomalous data points in the harvest estimates and smoothed those. So that had a, a benefit of reducing what would have been uh, initially a 28% reduction in sea bass harvest to 207 um, This same exercise is going to occur for SCUP. Um, Although it's not expected to change the, the measures in state waters, it may have some result on what uh, NOAA Fisheries uh, determines it needs to do for federal waters measures for SCUP. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a later slide. So we're now in this process of, um, of February of trying to develop our regulatory proposals, and that really leaves us with you know, limited time to get public input. Um, as next month in mid-March, um, there'll be a special ASMFC management board meeting um, to approve the state's regulatory proposals. And then we'll, um, you know, hopefully by April 1st, um, begin our state rulemaking process. Um, and because of the timing, that'll be an emergency action, um, which means we won't have a public hearing at that time, which is why us doing the scoping right now is, is really important. Um, and then we would hope to have um, new measures in place by May 1, um, although you know, we, we hope to be able to broadcast those um, in advance of that, even though they may not be on the books until May 1 or so. Um, but as, as Dan said, um, you know, it, it's obvious that there is a lot of frustration at this point with a reduction in sea bass and scup um, because of their high biomass. Um, estimates and um, the abundance that you see on the water. Um, and that is what is driving interest in um, revising the management process so that the biomass, the recent recruitment, um, whether or not the, the high harvests are resulting in overfishing or not can be better taken into consideration when setting the measures. So I say this because um, I want you to be on the lookout for public hearings that are gonna be scheduled coastwide. Uh, in March and April for what's being called the Harvest Control Rule Addendum, which will provide some management options that hopefully will provide some relief from this process in terms of um, providing for more predictable measures, more stability in the measures, and, and better um, account for um, the biomass trend. 
So we'll begin with fluke um, and, and where we are. Um, this graph that you see, um, I have similar one for each species. And what it's showing is um, the, the recreational harvest limits in the blue bars each year and how they co compare to the MRIP harvest data. This is at the coastwide level. Um, I think everyone is aware that um, the MREP survey went through uh, a change with the effort component of it within the last several years, which led to a recalibration of the more historical harvest estimates. So what I wanna point out is that you, um, when looking at how well the harvest compares to the harvest limit, up until 2018, the orange line is the most representative data for harvest to compare to the harvest limits because the recreational harvest limits were set based on the stock assessments that used that um, original MRIP data. When you get to um, 2019 for fluke, the stock assessments used the recalibrated MRIP data. And so the data points in yellow are what you should compare to the recreational harvest limits for 2019 and moving forward. Um, so what, what was done to consider measures for 2022 is take an average of the harvest from 2018 to 2021, um, which are four years where the state's measures were all status quo. And the average harvest across that time period was 7.79 million pounds. And so that's what we assume the harvest will be next year um, if the measures are status quo, if no changes are made. And we compare that to the harvest limit for next year um, which, which is the last blue bar, it is an increase for 2022. And that provide, provide and it's 10.36 million pounds. And that provided for um, a possible 33% increase in the harvest to um, meet but not exceed that harvest limit. However, it was the, de the decision of the council and the management board of the ASMFC to take um, a 16.5% liberalization along the coast, which is half of what could have been achieved. Um, and some of the, the reason for, for that approach was um, because of the high variability that you see in the harvest estimates despite status quo measures. And also that the 2018 year class, which is the first year class to be um, above average since 2010, is going to be age four and averaging about 18 inches and will be um, be harvested by um, the fishery. And so it's expected that harvest will increase even under status quo measures. So the result is that there's a 16.5% liberalization for each region of which for fluke there are six and Massachusetts is considered its own region. So this graph takes a, a little bit of a, a closer look at um, our state MRIP data. You can see our, our catch and harvest numbers on the left and numbers of fish, which have been generally declining um, since the, the late 1990s, although some, with some high interannual variability. Um, the table breaks out the, the catch and the harvest by mode. Um, where private vessel um, harvest makes up about 85% of the harvest the last four years. Um, and, the, and the four higher fleet is around 7% combined in terms of the number of fish harvested. Um, notably, 78% of the catch is estimated to be released um, with um, much of that likely attributed to the size limit. Um, based on some of the data that we'll see. And um, the harvest is um, dominated or July and August harvest kind of dominates the, the annual amount of 64% in July and August. Um, of course, you need to take into consideration the open season when looking at those percentages and over 90% comes from state waters. <clears throat> so this is... Um, also, MRIP data looks at the size distribution and the bag distribution of harvested fish the last four years. On the left, this is the proportion of, of harvest by, by length um, in terms of the weight. And so this is showing there's a very faint um, line here um, at the 17 inch 
mark. And these are each bar represents a half inch. So you can see that of you can see that there's some non-compliance, non-compliant harvest to the left of that line, but also that um, there's a, a large you know, proportion of fish that are being harvested at 17 inches and 18 inches. Um, and it declines, but out to about 20, you know, catching up to catching fish up to 25 inches or so. On the right, um, this looks at um, the proportion of um, angler trips that result in one fish, two fish, three fish, four fish, or five fish being harvested. So about for uh, this bar is showing you that about 40, 42, 43 percent of angler trips result in the angler taking home one fluke. Um, and that declines as you go out. Um, this is also um, depicted by the, mo uh, by the wave, wave three, four, and five. So the green bars are showing, again, that the majority of the harvest is being taken in um, wave four, which is July and August. Um, getting into our regulations, um, they we've, as I said earlier, all the states have been status quo the last four years, which for Massachusetts has been 17 inches, five fish, and a May 23rd to October 9th season. Um, the slide covers a couple of the more recent changes that we have had. We've been between four and five fish, between 16 inches and 17 and a half inches over the last um, 10 years or so. So getting into our preliminary analysis of what we could do with a 16 and a half percent liberalization for Massachusetts. Um, we um, can look at season. Um, there's certainly opportunity to extend the season if that's of interest. It's already, um, you know, we consider it to encapture, encapsulate most of the, the seasonal availability of, of fluke. But if there, there's comment to suggest a, a longer season, um, we'd like to hear that. But adding each, each day in wave three or wave five, you know, will increase the harvest slightly. If we look at the bag limit, uh, it's uh, our early estimates suggest that going up one fish to six fish would be a 10% increase in the harvest and that adding two fish to be at seven fish would be an 18% increase, um, which would be above the, the liberalization that's allowed and, and require some um, of the other measures to be um, revised as well to, to counteract that. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the size limit, this, is, this one's been a little bit tricky um, because a, a liberalization when it comes to the size limit relies heavily on um, release length data, which is um, not very plentiful. So uh, we borrowed some Rhode Island uh, headboat data that we're, that's where the, most of the release length data comes from the headboat fleet. And we combine that with our mass data, which the um, sample size is rather small, but this data combined suggests that a um, half inch decrease to 16.5 inches would be a 17% increase in harvest. So very close to what we're allowed. Um, and But that going to 16 inches, a full inch decrease would be more along the lines of a 30% increase. <clears throat> so we can come back to this slide um, later when we're talking about um, preferred measures. Moving on to black sea bass, <clears throat> similar figure here, showing the comparison of the recreational harvest limit each year to the harvest estimates. And again, it's these four years, 2018 to 2021, when harvest has averaged 8.51 million pounds that was compared to the 2022 RHL or recreational harvest limit of 6.74 million pounds. And so that's where the estimate of a 20.7% reduction comes from in order to not exceed next year's um, recreational harvest limit. With sea bass, there are three regions um, and we're in a region with Rhode Island and Connecticut and New York. And so we'll be working within our region to achieve that 20.7% reduction with this year's measures. 
Here's some similar data for our sea bass, um, notably a, a very different trend in terms of our catch and harvest numbers than fluke with, uh, with you know, notable increases. Um, I'll just note that the 2021 data here are preliminary and they don't include that outlier analysis that the technical committee um, conducted. So I believe that, that that 2021 data point would be, would be lower after the outlier analysis was added. Um, again, here we're seeing the, the private vessel mode um, at 93% of the harvest and uh, the four hire fleet at about 6% combined. Um, unlike fluke, um, most of the harvest does occur in May, June, no surprise. Um, similar or the same actually um, percent of catch being released at 78% and 92% of the harvest from state waters. Here again, we also see the size distribution of harvested fish. Um, again, the vertical line here shows our current 15 inch size limit. And this is showing the, the spread of, in weight of, of the, the size of harvested fish. So notably there's uh, higher proportions of the fish that are being harvested are at 17 or 18 inches than at um, 15 or 16 inches. And on the right with the, the bag analysis, um, you know, over 30% of the trips result in just one fish being kept per angler and a de decline um, through four fish. But then notably, there's a, you know, over 20% of angler trips um, maxing out at the bag limit of five fish. Um, and most of that, again, is occurring in wave three, um, shown in pink for May and June. Here's our, the sea bass regulations along the coast in 2021. We've been status quo since 2018, except for some small seasonal changes that were made through conservation equivalency, meaning that they were projected to have um, no effect on changing our harvest, um, but they were made to accommodate primarily a different start to the season date. We have typically, um, move that season start date to be either the third or the fourth Saturday in May, depending on the, how the calendar falls. Um, however, there's been a couple of years where we haven't done that. And so we've had a Monday opening or a, um, or a Tuesday opening this last year. And we've been at five fish and 15 inches since um, 2016. So when we look at the preliminary analyses for the reductions for Massachusetts, it's important to keep in mind, again, that we are a region and our region hasn't really met yet to talk about what our approach is going to be to achieving this reduction within the region. Um, so either each state could kind of go its own way and say, you know, we're going to pick the measures that make the most sense to our state and we're going to achieve a 20.7% reduction on our own. Or um, if there's an approach where, you know, a more holistic approach where we look to kind of move the measures in the same direction and maybe one state is taking a little bit more and one state is taking a little bit less of a reduction, but collectively that adds up to 20.7, that could be another way to approach this. But for the sake of tonight's um, analyses, we're kind of assuming um, that we need to achieve 20.7% reduction for in, within our state. If so, if we look at the bag changes um, on the left, um, Moving down to four fish is a seven and a half percent reduction, three fish, 17.5% reduction, two fish, 31.5% reduction. The minimum size limit, if we go up an inch to 16 inches, 6.3% reduction, 17 inches, a 17.5% reduction, and 18, a 34.1% reduction. Now it's, it's important to note that um, when you do more than just one measure change, you, you can't just add up those percents because there's an interaction between them. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can't just, you know, for example, add the reduction from four fish and 16 inches and, and have it equal to some of those two numbers there. Looking at the season, um, right now we're at May 18 to September 8. 
because of what we saw in the previous slide of the dominance of wave three for the harvest, you get a much larger you know, bang for your buck by closing a day in May than you do in September at the end of the season. So for each day that we cut in May, we can get about a 1.8% savings compared to 0.3 for wave four and 0.7 for wave five. I don't think we would be dipping into wave four, but it's just shown to, uh, to con for contrast there. So on the, on the right, you can see the calendar for this year and the current start date of May 18th is a Wednesday. And if we move to the, the third Saturday, which has been kind of a, a typical start date, um, that would be a 5.3% reduction. Um, another possibility could be to push it off another week to the, the last Saturday of the month, which would also provide some spawning protection. Um, and it gives you a very large percentage of the, uh, percentage of the re reduction that we would need to achieve, 17.6%. So cutting off the, the days at the end is shown up by the September um, calendar there. Um, you know, for example, instead of closing on the 8th, the Thursday, if we went to the um, September 5th, which is Labor Day, that would be just a little bit more than a 2% reduction. And if we took away September altogether and just closed on August 31st, that would be over a 6% reduction. So. These, these seasons that are on the left are kind of just examples of what, how drastic a, you know, if we if we left it at May 18th to the start, you would have to close as early as July 6th without changing any other measures because of um, how important May and June are to the, the harvest. Um, if you get it, if you bump to May 28th, you can go to September 3rd without making any changes to the, the size or bag. And um, this June 23rd example is just provided because Rhode Island and New York um, both open June 23rd and have notably a season that goes till the end of December. So that's, that's part of how they have that much longer season is because they don't open until um, June 23rd. So when we combine these together, these tables um, show some example combinations um, to give an idea of the, the range of options that we could be looking at so that you can think about, you know, what's important to you, um, what you could live with in terms of a size limit, um, whether the five fish or a three fish bag, for example, you know, what you can live with. Um, so the top table, um, looks at some combinations with a 16 inch minimum size. And um, for each one, um, there's a five, four and three fish bag. And um, those three different starts, start dates of the Wednesday that it would be currently, um, the Saturday that falls after that or the last Saturday in May. And then the same is provided for 17 inches. Um, on the right hand side, um, this looks at just a couple of split bag options. Um, some of the other states start out with a smaller bag and then go up in the fall to a higher bag. So this just looks at um, something similar with three fish and five fish um, going to five fish in, in September. But because again, um, so there, there's some options to get you know into early October um, at uh, 16 inches, say. Um, and five fish in, starting in September, but three fish earlier in the year. And then quickly, I'm not gonna go into as much detail for SCUP because um, the measures are already predetermined what we have to do. Um, but this uh, slide shows the, the three years of data. Um, you know, SCUP harvest is very much above the recreational harvest limits. Um, and these three data points for 2019, 2020, and 2021, when the measures were status quo, that average is 13.9 million pounds along the coast. And so to get down to the 2022 recreational harvest limit of 6.08 uh, million pounds, that would require a 56% reduction needed to not exceed that RHL. And what the, the council and management board decided to do was a one a uniform one inch size increase along the coast to each state's measures and the federal waters measures, um, which was estimated to have a 33% reduction in coastwide 
harvest. So that's not the 56%, obviously, that um, NOAA Fisheries was looking for. And um, so at the meeting, it was stated that you know, NOAA might um, do something different in federal waters, maybe even closing federal waters, um, because the ASNOC and the council had not um, opted to pick measures that would meet that whole 56% reduction. However, um, the technical committee is going to do that outlier analysis, which may, um, while not having effect on our expected measures for next this year, it may reduce that 56% reduction that's needed and, and maybe provide NOAA um, with some, some room to not be as drastic in their measures for federal waters. Um, and here's the, the length distribution of, of harvested fish um, in Massachusetts from, from our MREP data. And it's estimated, um, council staff did an analysis that estimated that um, by our going up one inch to 10 inches, it may have a 31% reduction in our harvest year. So uh, the SCUT measures are here, and I guess mainly I just wanted to point out that we were at um, a 10-inch size limit in Massachusetts prior to 2018, and uh, that reduction from 10 inches to 9 inches then was really driven by the record high 2015 year class, which has been subject to fishing pressure for a number of years now and has been followed by um, several years of below average recruitment, and so that's leading to um, you know, a, a downward trend in, in biomass, um, still from very high levels though. So at this point, um, I think we'll, we'll start with questions um, and before moving on to collecting any comments on uh, your preferred type of changes um, for these two species. All right, Jeff Fiamara, you're recognized. You can unmute yourself and ask a question. Hi, good evening. Uh, Nicola, just, I just had a question. When you guys were going over um, the bag limits and sizes and dates, was, um, was taking into consideration any separate limits for party and charter fleet? Has that, has that been considered at all? We, we haven't done any of that analysis yet. It would mean um, separating out the data and kind of redeveloping the spreadsheet. So we didn't we didn't do that yet. Um, and so far, there's only one state in the region that has um, a separate uh, bag limit in the fall for the for hire fleet. Um, I don't know if that's going to continue based on reductions that are needed. Um, and you know, in in the past, when we had looked at a for hire mode split. We didn't often have, you know, a uniform view on what those measures should be from the for hire mode. Whether there was there was some that you know had a, a preference for shorter season, higher bag, and those had, that had preference for longer season. Um, so, you know, if if that was going to be considered, um, it would be helpful to have that feedback tonight as to, to what you're looking for, particularly in order to, to see if it could be modeled. Um, but I think overall, you know, it's, it's preferred to keep the modes together if possible. Um, the data, um, you know, the PSEs get, get higher on the MREP data when you break it down by mode. So our analyses are, are better when we're at a more aggregated level as well. I guess I was just referring back to the sea bass chart where it showed that, you know, the party and charter boats only only accounted for 6% of the total catch. So I find it difficult as a business owner to be penalized when we we take so little of the resource compared to the recreational guys. Got you. Got you. Right. It is it is a, you know, a smaller part of the overall harvest. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Richard McCarthy, you're recognized. You can unmute yourself and ask a question.
Richard McCarthy. I'll come back to you. David Lane, you gotta mute yourself, you recognize? David? This is Dave Elaine. Gotcha. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm, I'm a recreational fisherman and I really like the longer season. And I'm willing to take a, le a lesser catch. Um, being a recreational fisherman, it's not about the meat, it's just about the enjoyment of being out there. So I enjoy the longer season. Thank you. Any comment about the, si the size limit for sea bass? What, you know, curious if how people feel about you know going up to 16 inches or 17 inches. If that'll, what type of effect you see that having on your on your harvest? Jack Creighton, you recognize? I, Nicole, what you said is important. I think that. Um, Going up with the size limit, I mean, a, a 15 inch uh, sea bass is, is not anybody's uh, answer to taking home uh, supper, if they will. Um, so I, I support um, increasing both the fluke and um, black sea bass um, size limit. Thank you, Jack. Scott McAfee, you recognize? Yes, can you hear me okay? I can, Scott, go right ahead. Hi, I had a question. Um, I'm confused on, I'm sorry, you probably get this all the time, but how do you get the data collected for recreational vessels? So these, these all of these analyses were based on um, MRIP data, which is produced from a, survey that is conducted in all the states uh, has two components where um, what you're catching and you know how many fish you're taking on a trip is conducted from an intercept survey um, where hmm. people out on uh, at, at public access sites you know intercept anglers and, and get data directly from them and then the effort data how many trips you're taking um, is is currently collected through a um, a mail survey, where surveys are mailed to anglers, um, and they are asked to indicate how many you know trips they take, and so that information is used to expand out to a, a harvest estimate. So it's not a census, um, you know, like commercial harvest data is, but a a, a survey that estimates the harvest and has. Um, you know, uncertainty associated with it as a as a survey estimate. Okay, thanks. Also, um, another question or observation, actually. I mean, I definitely would be in favor for a little bit of extended season because I do I do tend to troll for a lot of bonito um, and bluefish in the fall, and I tell you what, <laughs> I can't I can't go ten feet without catching sea bass at the end of the season. And especially after the, obviously the season's closed and they actually become a nuisance. I, I have to completely leave the area to get away from some of them. Um, and also I primarily fish um, close to the vineyard, vineyard sound, close to the vineyard, Nantucket sound, Muskegon, the Hooter. Um, I don't know where the number, the data you're getting for increases in fluke but i am not seeing it i've caught three keeper fluke and yeah i could be doing it wrong <laughs> i'm not saying i'm the greatest fisherman in the, in the world but i've caught three i love bottom fishing i was born and raised bottom fishing i've caught three keeper fluke in vineyard sound in the last two years <laughs> i don't know where the increase thought is coming from but it's definitely not coming from vineyard sound and uh you know i i'd like to see more opportunities to fill out surveys um i don't i i 
I've been questioned once at a boat ramp in the last 10 years. And I fish every minute that I'm not working in the summertime. So I would like, definitely like to see more availability to, to actually do a survey because I don't think you're getting the best data for the recreational side. And thank you. That's all I got. Scott, would you be supportive of, of the a decrease in the minimum size for fluke as a, as a consequence of what you're consequence of what you're seeing as opposed to lengthening the season or increasing the bag? Uh, be, to be honest, I'm not sure because um, I mean, I talked to a lot of my buddies that are all very devout bottom fishermen and they're seeing the same thing. I talked to a lot of um, unless you're going out to the shoals on a charter boat, no one is seeing those numbers to justify raising um, or lowering the, the size limit or the bag or raising the bag limit. I really don't, I don't see it at all. And granted, like I said, I mean, I, I don't travel very far because of my size of my boat. You know, I stay pretty close to the vineyard. So, um, you know, maybe Buzzards Bay has got a better, a better a fishery or out further east of Nantucket or Easter side of Nantucket Sound. But from my area, which is around the very close to the vineyard, man, I tell you what, it's pretty discouraging. And, and to be honest, after the opener in uh, last May for sea bass, they disappeared. Which, so I'm not, I'm not too um, hurt about the, you know, the reduction for sea bass because they flat out disappeared from Vineyard Sound unless they were, you know, eight, 10 inches. There's a million of millions and millions of those suckers, but you know, the, the jumbos, I'm not seeing it in Vineyard Sound. Okay. Thank so you, I'm Scott. Not, yeah, no problem. Sorry to carry on so long. No, no, that's fine. I, I was just going to comment that, um, you know, the, the spawning stock biomass for fluke, the biomass estimates, you know, large fish has shown a decline after, uh, you know, a number of years of poor recruitment to the fishery, the age one fish being added to the population. So, um, you know, your observations do, do align with that, that part of the stock assessment. Um, and you know, the, the harvest in general in Massachusetts has declined for fluke. Hey, Nicola, Thanks. this is Dan. I have a question for Scott. Scott, um, you expressed a desire to have a longer season and some states do that. So my question to you is, um, how late in the season would you wanna go and how low of a bag limit would be enough to, to satisfy you? In other words, we, we have five fish from the beginning to the end of the season. If we were to extend the season longer, is 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 two enough? Is one enough? I mean, you know, one per angle, two per angle. What what? Yeah, uh, I mean, I what can... would fit with your fishing uh, style? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, this year I started fishing for Tatog a little early, just to kind of. Um, um, poke around and see what my see how it was and it was not good but I tell you what when I started um, tog fishing at the end of October the big the, really the last week of October the beginning of November is when I was seeing definitely seeing more bigger sea bass um, and then ooh, I'm about, my phone's about to die um, but I would definitely be in favor of extending it and being able to keep, you know, two fish all the way to November 1st, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd, I'd go for that easily because when we're trolling, trolling for Benito, Albi, especially come Derby time, man, you, 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 like I said, you literally have to leave the area because you can't get through the sea bass. I've seen sea bass blitzes <laughs> in the fall. Okay, thank you. No problem. Richard McCarthy, I'm coming back to you. You can uh, 
unmute yourself. Richard McCarthy, there's a microphone button that allows you to mute and unmute yourself. All right, I'll come back to you again. Chris Riccardi, you recognize you're going to mute yourself. I don't know how. Can you hear me? I can. You did it. Okay. There is no mute button showing up on this screen of mine, but if you can hear me, that's great. Um, I'm just going to add just some information from my experience. I'm just a, a recreational fisherman, um, and I've been fishing off of Westport, Massachusetts, so... Uh, Southern Buzzards Bay, and I don't go out very deep, so I'm fishing, um, you know, in an 18-foot boat that can go out, but not way out off the uh, coast. So it's areas that I've been fishing for maybe 20 or 30 years because my family owns a camp in Westport, and I access uh, fishing areas from the Westport River. And what we've seen is far fewer fluke and scup and just a lot of sea bass in the same areas that we've been fishing for two or three decades. So it's just, I don't have any quantitative data, but with sea bass, what we're seeing is just when we go to the same places in bottom fish, there's fewer fluke, fewer scup, and just a lot of sea bass and a lot of young of sea bass so you if when you're fishing you're not only catching some of the keeper fish that are over 15 you're catching just a lot of smaller fish so that means tells me that the population's growing that young recruitment of young is high and i just can't um help but thinking that this uh you know part of it is probably warming ocean in the mo northern movement of sea bass coming in and that's one reason why it's changed, but it just seems to, I was, would expect when the regulations were coming out over the, the last few years that you'd be seeing liberalized sea bass, even maybe a shorter um, size limit so that you would reduce the population and reduce the competition on fluke and scup so that we'd balance the population. So when I saw the email notice, it was sort of the opposite of what I would have expected um, and when you're looking at your population data, you're showing decreases in fluke and you're seeing a big spike in sea bass harvest and you're making your decisions based on a calculated recreational harvest limit rather than on the population of fish that appear to be out there. So I just wanted to bring that up. I'm a, I'm a biologist and I work as an environmental scientist. I've had a career for 30 years doing this. I don't do a lot of fisheries work, but I do a lot of other kinds of work as a consultant. And um, it just seems like to me, it doesn't make sense, that's all. And I, and I have no, I can't provide any kind of study data. You guys have a lot of that, but uh, just the observation. Thank you, Chris. Hey, Chris, this is, uh... Dan McKernan coming back to you. Um, so, you know, we have three different um, ways to go here because we are forced to reduce the, the projected harvest and that would be size limit, bag limit or season. Is there one of those that you think would be the least objectionable if we had to, to um, or when we take the action? Dan, I had taken Chris's, um, Chris, you can unmute yourself if you have that option. Do, okay, sorry, it, it showed up that time. Yes. I don't, you, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can, go ahead. Okay, I, I don't know what would be the best approach. Um, I was thinking that there might be, I mean, I, my, my thought process is very different than what the regulation goals 
seem to be, but I was thinking that with sea bass, it would be some sort of slot limit where you allow harvest of smaller fish to reduce the population in general, but protect mid-sized fish so that they'd be more larger fish. So instead of having a increase in size limit that protects all those small fish that we're seeing, like it's, I don't see how any, you can't drop a jig in some of the, along some of the areas that we've been fishing now without hooking a sea bass in, if they're biting, it's like a matter of a minute. And a lot of those fish are sublegal fish. So it seems to me that in the long run, if the population of sea bass continues to increase dramatically and it affects the, has competition with other fish, which they must, then you would wanna reduce the numbers, but maintain the larger size. So a slot limit might be a better approach. Now, most of my experience is fishing freshwater lakes and rivers where this is done by inland fisheries agencies where they, they use slot limits, but I don't know if it's ever used on, on uh, ocean management or not. I know that it's been used for stripers in Maine in the past, and, um, but that's been changed. And there's probably other slot limit regulations that have been used. But that, that would be what I would just think off the top of my head without really having any kind of access to data like you have. Okay, thanks. All right, I'm gonna to go to Frank Perry who hasn't had an opportunity to speak yet. Frank, you're gonna mute yourself. Go ahead, Frank. We're not hearing you, Frank. All right, I'm going to go to the next person in line. Jay Walpole, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you uh, very much. Uh, I go with what Jack said, uh, and I, I personally, as a recreational guy, uh, I enjoy having a longer season rather than a shorter one. Uh, increasing the size limit by one inch uh, would have a minimal impact on me and I'd still be able to go out and fish. Uh, you know, I, if I had my druthers, I prefer not to uh, reduce the bag, but you know, if that's necessary, uh, make it minimal. And, and I, I like the idea of starting in a little bit later, a week late. It seems to be uh, on the uh, sea bass side. If you started a week late, you, you, uh, you net some, some help there. Uh, so those are my comments. I like, the, uh, I like the longer season. I like a chance to go out and, and fish and look forward to being able to go out and fish. Uh, where, uh, you know, if you have a really short season, ending in July. Uh, it just it just destroys half the summer for us. Thanks. So Jay, it sounds like when you talk about having a longer season, you were you want that longer season later in the year, but you're willing to sacrifice what not what is now the first week of the season or which is uh in May. Yeah. Uh instead of the 21st, the 28th would would save you a percent uh, a, a fair percentage, I, I, from what I recall. Uh, I don't have the screen in front of me yeah. anymore, but there was a, a decent number uh, of savings there. Uh, increase it by an inch if you need to, and then I can go fishing yeah. you know, throughout the fall. Yeah, so what happens with this, these data is that all of the data for a given wave are considered, or all days within a wave are considered to have the same catch rates, even though we know that on May 1st, there may not be hardly any black sea bass, but um, the, the May wave, a May June wave, which is called wave three, whatever their catch rate per day is, 
And if you take away days in that wave, that's that's the proportional savings that you're credited with. And so I take your point, especially that earlier in the season as the fish are just arriving, uh, we may not have as many fish in mid-May as we would uh, in, at the 1st of June, but all of that May-June period is averaged for a certain catch per day or, or you know, the amount per day that is, that, uh, that is projected to be the same. So I appreciate your comments though. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, in, in terms of um, when you're referencing a longer season, um, is, is the current closure in, in mid-September what, what you mean or are you, would, are you interested in you know, opening late, being open later than that as well? Well, you know, I'd like to have everything, but I, I realize that there has to be a-, a Thank you, uh, have a good night. I, I, I realize that there has to be a compromise. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, I'd like to see, you know, through mid-September and, and, you know, even later if, if possible, the falls are a beautiful time to fish and I'd like to be able to do that. Uh, you know, you guys, you guys have to make, you know, the tough decisions and we have to live with them. So, uh, you know, I, I, I want to be able to go out and fish. Gotcha. And did you have any um, input on the fluke changes to liberalize the, the regulations? No, uh, although I, I am going to do uh, some more fluke fishing this year. I haven't been doing it in the past. I've gone away from striped bass altogether, and uh, I've been using sea bass to tug. And I, now I'm going to also move over to the uh, the fluke side. So thank you. Thank you. And Nick, as most of the comments seem to be focused on um, black sea bass, could you put off that straw man slide? <clears throat> sure can. All right, Douglas Dougherty, you're off. Uh, so I'm a recreational fisherman, colleague of Jack Creighton. And yeah, I would like to endorse the concept of a longer season also, and especially extending it in, in later in this on the uh, September side and agree that uh, although it's great to get out early in the season, I would rather give up that early period uh, for the later period. And likewise, uh, you know, I don't keep fish that are just over the minimum. And so increasing the, the size limit uh, would certainly not affect me at all. Um, could I ask for a clarification on, on one thing is, are these limits are being proposed based on data for the whole Northeast, or is this specifically on data for Massachusetts? Uh, these these example measures that you're seeing on on the screen are, are specific to Massachusetts's data. But are the the recommendation to uh, reduce by twenty point seven percent is that for the whole Northeast? That, that's um, throughout the management unit, which goes all the way down to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Right. So, I mean, my question is, you know, that reflects presumably the stock is being is going down in the south because of the uh, shifting of the population to the north. And I would expect that we're seeing an increase in Massachusetts where we're seeing less population in, in some of the Southern states. And it, it might be a more nuanced uh, examination would show that as people seem to be observing, we're seeing an increase here. Whereas if you look at the whole uh, region, uh, there's a, a net decrease. In fact, we're seeing, I'm seeing sea bass now on the, the north side of the Cape, which I you know never saw before. But catching those more frequently. I'm um, just to, to comment on the on the regional differences. What the the stock assessments have shown is 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 definitely that that increase in in the Northeast. You know, starting 15 years ago or so, um, and and the more southern region north of New Jersey, the the biomass estimates have pretty much maintained there. So. 
Um, but it, but each each region, you know, um, is being asked to take the same reduction so that in total, because the, the harvest limit is, is a coastwide value. So each state is and region is being asked to contribute to the reduction. All right, we're going to go back to some folks who have made comments. I'm going to go to uh, Jeff. You recognized Jeff Viamari? Yep. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question, and then I'll um, put my recommendations. Have have I'm looking at the split bag limits. Have you guys thought about doing a split bag limit like New Jersey does? Heavy in the heavy in the spring, small in the summer, and heavy in the fall. Has that been considered at all? Um, we, we could, we could look at it. Um, what, what we see though, because, um, May and June, the, the catch rates are so high in May and June that if you don't change the bag there, um, you know, the harvest stays high. And so if in, in, um, July, August, sorry. Yeah. July, August, when harvest is more minimal, if you reduce the bag, then you don't really get the same savings. So it doesn't do much to extend the season, for example, if, if you reduce the, the bag then. But um, I, I'm certainly open to, to looking at some more uh, analysis of that. Yeah, but, you know, just you, you know how much the, the spring sea bass fishing means to, you know, us, us charter guys. It's a, it's a big chunk of our business. And, and, and you guys know our business is steadily declining because of the loss of bag limits that we've had with sea bass. So anything that will allow us to keep that early May through even mid June, it doesn't need to go till July to let us have that five fish limit would, would is, is crucial to our businesses. So with, with that being said, if you can look at options for that would be, would be great. Um, but if, if that's not the case, I, the only way we can survive would be to do the, the 17 inch minimum size and the May 18th to September 2nd for the sea bass for us. Cause you know, from a business standpoint, I know all these rec guys here that they have access to the water all the time. So they're going to try to promote longer seasons, less fish, just because like the gentleman said, he fishes every day when he's not working, but from a business standpoint, we rely on that sea bass in the spring heavily we're in the summer and, and, and towards September, we can combine it with striped bass, with fluke, with other, with other fish. So um, that's my recommendation on the sea bass. As for the fluke, um, you know, me personally, I'd like to see an increase in the bag limit to six. That would, um, that would give us something to market to our out-of-state clients and, and make our trips and our fishery more, more valuable to the, to the charter boats. On sea bass, Jeff, and yeah. um, the idea of dropping the bag uh, later in the season, like how how low how low would you like, go? Like, like yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, my my back is not like what it used to be, but um, you know, <laughs> honestly, in the summer, it's it's a bycatch for us. You know, um, if it could get down to three, that you know, that'd be fine. You know, just as long as we can we can maintain that five in the spring. That, that's the big thing because in the, in the summertime when we're fluking it it's a bycatch so if we get two or three a guy that that's that's an added bonus it's not it's not a target species like it usually is for us in the spring is is too unpalatable i mean that's that's what new jersey goes to for july august yeah but then they also bump it back up again to 10 in the, yeah. in the fall <laughs> so you know it i i think three would you know kind of like what Kind of like reverse what Rhode Island does, you know, like if have have the heavy limit in the spring and then the light limit three fish for the rest. All right, gotcha. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eric Mora. Can you guys hear me? I can't hear. Go right ahead. Excellent. I finally figured this out. All right. So um, May 18th, it has to open May 18th. That's not an option. Trips have been sold. Multiple boats. Hotel reservations are made. People have taken off from work. 
it's not an option. 17 inches is hard to swallow. Bumping two fish in one, one year, that, that's another tough pill to swallow here. Um, I heard earlier, I was trying to drive and listen at the same time, but Nicole said you cannot split it. You can't have a mixed uh, short in the season, a little combination of, uh, say, an inch and a couple of days. Um, I mean, oh, we get there, the... there can be combinations. When we're doing that slide, it was just showing what each individual option as a standalone would get you. On this slide, you can see that there's, you know, these are combinations of size limits and bag limits and seasons. Okay, all right. So yeah, it's, it's worked. There's some stuff we can mend a little bit here, but May 18th, it's, uh, we, we've been through this for I don't know how many years, the last 15 years, you know, we're getting to February and then we're talking about the opening date when these trips have been booked six months ago. People have taken their vacation days. I hear a lot of other people saying, oh, the fall, the fall, the fall. Yeah, well, good luck. If you do this full time, you're lucky to get off the dock uh, once every five, six days. Um, like I said, the May 18th open is very important to me. I heard Jeff talking about going down to three fish. His fishery is different than the head boats. You know, some of us are still bottom fishing all year long. We go to Nomans, we do stuff like that. I, three fish is, it's gonna hurt. So um, I, I, if we have to swallow it, I would like to see if we can maybe do a, shave a few days off the fall and somehow meet in the middle because the two inch bump is gonna be tough. In the springtime, Helen Kelly can catch them. But you get into you know the summertime, the wreck guy is going to have a hard time, and they're going to be very upset about that. You know, going up two inches, unless they want to go steam twenty five, you know, twenty miles and look for him. You know, so to keep everybody happy, I would say yeah, uh, we can do something with shave a little bit off the fall, and meet somewhere in the middle on the size limit for this year, and then reevaluate the following year. And also for fluke, uh, well, I'm still alive here. Fluke, I think, I think I would, I would rather see the size limit go down. Um, there's, a, you know, the, the average person for Buzzards Bay, Vineyard Sound, Nantucket Sound, even Nomans, the fishing ain't the same down there. You know, if you went down to a, down an inch, yeah, it would open the fishery up to, you know, to a lot of people. They wouldn't be so discouraged. I've been listening to the recreational anglers complain they haven't caught a keeper fluke in two years. So let's give them an opportunity to take some fish home over that extra fish, you know, this way everybody's happy at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I think that's all I got right now. Thank you, Art. Nick or Dan, did you have questions? Take that as a no. All right, I'm gonna try back with Frank Perry again. Frank, you're gonna mute yourself, you're recognized. Frank, you there? Frank, you're muted still. All right. Richard McCarthy, I'm gonna try you again. You can unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me this time? I can, yes. Excellent. Um, my question is with the sea bass, I was wondering if there's any consideration rather than uh, shortening the season or the or the uh, bag limit or the size limit, was there any consideration to the gender uh, throwing females back? Just don't keep them. I, I would think that that would give us a, a huge reduction. I see uh, a lot of guys just take everything they get. Um, I throw the females back. I figure more eggs in the water is more fish later on. Um. So all, all the analyses are, you know, don't distinguish, there's no sex consideration giving, given to these analyses or nor is the, the harvest limit, the coastwide harvest limit, you know, gender specific. It's the, the overall weight of the population. Okay. Um, I think that would also be a, a difficult rule to, for compliance and enforcement. Really? Because um, I mean, I know that that's the one fish that everybody seems to know the difference between the male and the female. Um, we just tell them to throw them back, but, but if we can't, we can't. Uh, as far as the fluke is concerned, I'd like to see everything status quo and just let the, uh, let the season go a little longer in the fall. 
longer season for fluke in the fall in the in the fall right okay that's uh, that's pretty much it for me thank you thank, thank you, you. All right, Frank, I'm going to go to you one more time to see if you can get your technology situation sorted. You're recognized and you can unmute yourself. All right, doesn't look like it's happening tonight, but you can submit a written comment if you want. Um, all right, Nick, that is it for the, um, or Nicola and Dan, that's it for the uh, queue. Jared, do you want to go back or Nicola back to the slide where we talk about process and where we are and the uh, and the timing of all this? Yep, there you go. Okay, so at this point, we'll be taking comments through Monday. We'll be um, compiling all those comments and making a uh, kind of formulating a a proposal uh nicola is the the uh our advisory commission going to meet prior to the deadline for submitting our proposal for massachusetts um no it is not um i don't know exactly what the deadline is um but there's a technical committee meeting on march 2nd so it will have to be sometime before then that we submit a proposal and the com our commission is not meeting until march 10th but yeah. we, we our proposal can include um several options that yeah. you know a suite of options could be approved and then there could be some time to select one with okay. some co with commission input all right and then at our commission meeting on the 10th of March, at that point, would we um, make a decision or that would be that would be in April at the April meeting of our commission, we would make kind of a final call. Uh, depends on the timing of that. And uh, that's April 7th, right, Jared? Yeah. Um... I, I would uh, recommend if we come to as close to a conclusion at the March meeting as possible. Yeah, okay. All right, well, we we appreciate the feedback we've gotten tonight. It's, it was actually pretty informative. And, and uh, while it was varied, uh, we got some great insights. Uh, we would urge uh, anyone to submit written comments if they think of anything they haven't thought of or want to just reinforce their points, uh, feel free to send us uh, an email. And, and what email address would that be, Jared? Marine.fish at mass.gov. There you go. So um, yeah, if there's, uh, are there any other questions or any other uh, particular issues anyone from the public would like to bring up before we close the meeting? Not seeing any hands. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for your contributions tonight. Uh, it was uh, it was a good discussion, and we really appreciate you taking the time to to speak with us. And with any luck, we'll see you in person uh, in the spring. So thank you, and have a great night.